Welcome to another Atlas stream. Um, Jesse Rapsack, uh, co-founder, co-creative director here at Grape Shot. And I uh, got a couple people here today with me as well. Hi, guys. I'm Jet, the product manager and community lead at Grape Shot Walking Atlas. And I'm sure you guys are eager to meet a new face here. <laughs> Who's this guy? Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Eric Wannanen. I'm the new lead game designer on Atlas. I was previously at ArenaNet working on Guild Wars 2 for several years on several different teams. Really excited to be here today. And I'm looking forward to bringing a fresh perspective to Atlas and our future development. So Eric's been working on some MMO stuff and large world <laughs> multiplayer games. Mm -hmm. That's very relevant. somewhat relevant <laughs> yeah. to, to Atlas bit, yeah. and where, where we plan to go with things. Um, so yeah, we're really excited about Atlas's development. Um, you know, we've come a, a long way already, but there's still a long way to go. Uh, Eric's been with us for a good amount of time now, working behind the scenes to kind of plan for the future uh, post Xbox launch. So mm -hmm. we'll be talking yeah. a little bit about that a little bit later. Um, but uh, just want to reiterate um, how excited the team here is developing Atlas uh, about what's happening and what's coming uh, uh, in the future. So, uh, so let's first, take it away. First and foremost, we want to give a huge thanks to everyone who submitted their questions. Oh, we yeah. did review them before the stream. Mm -hmm. and We've kind of framed our stream so that we're giving you as many answers as we can to those questions, but we're not going to specifically call them out in every instance. It's like you... By watching this, you'll you'll just gain the answers, right? Whether they're hard questions, <laughs> you'll just gain them. Exactly yeah. right. It's like it's a knowledge transfer thing, right? That's that's mm -hmm. how. Oh, it for is. sure. That's and that's yeah. what we're here, right? right? So yeah, why don't we dive right in? Cool. So uh, let's start with the current state of the game. What is it, and where are we heading? Sure. So you know, Atlas is at a bit of a crossroads right now, right? We're working hard on Xbox development, um, but we're also working very hard on bringing some fairly big changes to Atlas moving forward. You know, some of you may have seen my post last week, but our mission statement is going to be to make Atlas the ultimate pirate experience, and all of our decision making and designs are going to be funneled through that mantra moving forward. So I am very excited to hear that, <laughs> and I know there are a lot of people in chat who are very happy to hear that too. And speak Speaking of state of the game, mm -hmm. I think that something that always comes up is performance, right? Like, what is the current of performance in the game? Sure. Like, is that priority of ours? What do we plan to do? Performance is always going to be a top priority of ours. You know, it's something that we'll always be keeping in mind when we are talking about new designs and going to be making new changes. Um, you know, it's, so it's just something we're always going to continue to improve upon because you can just never really have enough of good performance. So it will be our, our, our topmost priority moving forward because no matter what new things we add to the game or what um, exciting new stuff, it doesn't really matter if it's not performant, right? So yeah, and performance is just kind of an ongoing thing, you know, especially with the console launch uh, starting with Xbox. Um, you, you know, a lot of those performance improvements that we've been focusing on in the background uh, will come to the f uh, forefront on the PC game as well. Um, but that's not the end of it. We'll have uh, lots more uh, tweaks and stuff to do uh, over you know the coming months and years. Uh, for um, a final launch, and uh, that goes along with bug fixes and all sorts of things that, that are rolled up into performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so obviously there are a lot of elements that make up Atlas as a whole, right? And some are more fun than others right now, admittedly. Uh, and finding the right balance between those uh, can be really tricky. So in general, um, we'd like to you know, communicate that what we want is we want players to be able to log in no matter how long it's been since they last played, jump into the fun very quickly, and also not necessarily have to worry about losing a lot of their progress when they go offline too, um, you know, such as ships, uh, for example. We recognize there are issues, you know, for example, ship boarding, torpor meta, um, a lot of tames and creatures, you know, an excess of that perhaps. So uh, let's bring up some visuals to show um, exactly what I'm talking about and we can elaborate on that a bit more. Right. So let's talk about the DNA of Atlas right now, right? Um, so basically, there's a couple things we want to clarify first. Um, what we did as a team is we tried to identify the core areas of the game. And then we assessed how much time the average player is actually spending in each of those areas. And then we asked ourselves, OK, what do we want this split of those core areas to actually look like? How much time do we actually want players to be spending in our game? What are the areas that really shine? And, and sort of how can we adjust the DNA of Atlas, mm -hmm. so to speak, to make it more reflective of what we actually want players to be experiencing? Um, and this is kind of what we came up with here. And so this is um, a breakdown of, again, on the left-hand side, you see kind of a current layout of our DNA. And on the right-hand side is our future DNA goals. Um, you know, prior to we, us coming out of early access. And so, you know, 
as a player, your, your experience might not actually be um, entirely reflective of what's on the left there. But as a team, we decided this was kind of what the average player is experiencing. And um, you know, that's what we kind of wanted to do. We wanted to move from um, the state of the DNA on the left-hand side to much more reflective of a breakdown of the right-hand side. Right, so. and something to keep in mind is like, we know there's overlap here, so when mm -hmm. you look at combat, for instance, there's combat that takes place on land, combat that takes place on sea, right? Sure. It's PvP, exactly, PvE, that's right, right, all right. combat, it's, right? It's all funneled into one. So when you take a look at this, think of it as a very, very high-level approach to the current pie chart of Atlas, you should say, and then what we're trying to get to is the next stage. And that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to be taking away content from the existing slices. Like, you still will be able to build on land. Like, we're not trying to shrink what you can achieve on land, we're trying to grow out the other areas, improve the systems that can't exist, as well as work on new systems. Right, exactly. You know, ultimately, what we're looking to achieve prior to coming out of early access is a game that emphasizes more C gameplay, more combat, less land. But again, we're not talking about removing your ability to do things on land or to claim or to build those sorts of things, but just shifting a focus and an right. emphasis on how much of the, your time as a player you're spending doing those things. Yeah. So obviously, all this isn't going to happen all at once. So. Mm -hmm. We have a roadmap, right, to, yes. to go over, so let's check that out. So just a couple things again for this roadmap before we jump right in. Um, you know, basically the, the main point to take away is the new roadmap isn't going to come into effect until after Xbox release. So that's something to just keep in mind is that once Xbox uh, it releases for Atlas, that's when you'll start to see this new roadmap sort of unfurl. Mm -hmm. And something else we want to share is that this roadmap and the changes we make, whether they're balanced or content, they're probably going to be based around the multiplayer mode and official servers. So we're going to use that as a barometer to see, like, hey, well, are these changes we're making effective? That doesn't mean to say the work we carried out on the other modes won't, like, they won't benefit this because everyone is going to benefit this. Whether you play from single player, non dedicated, unofficial, right. you will get all the things that we're going to be giving to the multiplayer mode. From, sure. And it's just that the work, we already did the bulk of the work. That's mm -hmm. basically the gist of it. And now that that's out the door, we can go back to focusing on the multiplayer mode and our official network. Right, all game modes will benefit from all of the changes coming to the roadmap, but right. when we talk about the specific values and the yeah. specific balance tweaks that we make, we are looking to multiplayer and the official right. network as a barometer, so to speak. Exactly. Yeah. It's probably worth mentioning that this roadmap isn't everything that we plan to do. It's more of a high-level overview of some of the major milestones uh, that we're planning to target uh, in chronological order. So, uh, you know, there's a couple specific details we'll get into, but we're not going to reveal every little thing on the roadmap today, and we may come up with more things as, as we go through development and early access and work with the community and you guys to, to see how this stuff's uh, being received. Right, and the simple truth is there's just way too much information for us to regale on just mm -hmm. this one stream, so we'll do it much more piecemeal over time as the roadmap comes out, and more importantly, we want to keep things for surprises too, right? Like, I love surprises, the team loves surprises, we want to surprise people with the stuff that's coming out, so we're going to keep some some things a little close to the chest, even if we don't address them right today. So, Cool. Let's take a look at it. Cool. Okay. So this is our long-term roadmap, right? Um, basically, we're taking a multi-phase approach here. And this is the chronological order, for all intents and purposes, of how we're looking to tackle areas of the game. That's not to say that we aren't working on things in later phases right now. It's mm -hmm. just they may take more time for us to actually get to them in a place where we can release them and feel good about them. Um, so, but yeah, this is pretty much the long and short of it. So why don't we jump in and break each one of these down individually so players can understand a bit more of what we're actually talking about here. Right, phase one. So this is maybe one of the phases I'm most excited for. Well, <laughs> I guess I'm excited for every phase. Yes. But, like, this one I'm pretty keen on. So the plan for this is... I'm going to need a pie chart of your excitement level. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get Chris on that right away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to say is that we won't be introducing new content in this phase one. This is about right. looking at the things we already have in the game because there's a lot of factors that mm -hmm. come into making Alice the game it is. And there's a lot of things we can tweak and things that we can change and some of that doesn't need work. And that's what we're going to be looking at in this, during this initial phase, make sure that those things are in a good place they need, need to be. Mm -hmm. And plus, we just added a bunch of content recently right. to the game. You know, right. we got all sorts of, you know, Blackwood, right. the new sn uh, Snake Boss, uh, new uh, islands that have, have been on PTR and it's being looked at, <clears throat> as well as new items and weapons. And, you know, there's just been content, content, content. So we think it's a good time to kind of take a break and focus on, you know, this phase one uh, stuff here that doesn't involve adding more things, but mm -hmm. making sure that that stuff is polished and, and free of the major bugs. Right. right. And then something that's important to us during this initial phase is we want to reduce the tedium and streamline getting to the fun. So we've kind of started addressing this stuff recently as well. In, in June slash July, we had some patches that target some of the 
the pain problems that players had, like feeding crew, for example, right? Sure. You had to go around and Right, sure. we recently and had a fix exactly. for and some of that, yeah. We had a silo go in, and mm -hmm. it's things like that we're looking at. Maybe we'll take a look at ice boxes and et cetera. There's kind of a huge list of stuff we can go through. And we're not going to go through everything, but oh, we yeah. will give you some Well, there's specific. a ton of examples, right? Yeah. Um, just off the top of my mind, there's uh, replacing the font across the game to a more universal font. You no know, more so boxes. We're, so we're not missing characters from yeah. our limited font, right? Um, hiding more text behind the extended UI function so that it's a little cleaner for players mm -hmm. as they're just playing moment to moment. Uh, removing negative negative status effects from, or uh, the negative effects from status effects rather, including mm -hmm. vitamins, right? Tweaking those up so that they don't feel quite as punishing. Um, giving players the option to actually choose which Kraken fight they want to go into, similar right. to how the Yeti works right now. Um, and just one, like one more, making ladders, ladders on ships, making them easier <laughs> to climb onto, right? They're just these little things that um, don't seem huge in the grand right. scheme of things, They're but impactful. collectively, yeah. they really just make the game feel a lot more polished, mm -hmm. so. Have you tried to climb a ladder out of a real ship? I mean, I think the difficulty level is pretty representative in the game, actually. <laughs> I suppose it depends on the that. waves, but, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe that's the realism right. element that we can keep. No, we'll, we'll definitely make it a Admittedly, little... Admittedly, I'm not climbing ladders out of the ocean <laughs> yeah. all day long, so sure. maybe I'd get better at it. Yeah. Uh, cool. So uh, phase two, we want to tackle sea ships and sailing. And uh, if you remember from our pie graph, that's the largest part of the pie. And we really want players to spend the most time here having fun. I mean, honestly, as a studio, that's where we put most of our development time mm -hmm. uh, in Atlas, creating the ocean, making sure it was networked and possible to even uh, be in a multiplayer environment. Uh, making that look great, making the physics for the ships work on the ocean, physics for players, physics for items, all of this stuff is all custom things uh, that we spent a lot of time adding to the engine. Uh, and then the ships themselves, you know, building customized ships from scratch out of resources and pieces uh, to look the way you want and perform the way you want and have different characteristics, customizing things like the sails, uh, adding cargo containers, like all of that stuff is a pretty major time investment for the team. And you know, th that's why we want people to spend the most time there because we feel like it's some of the best parts of the game. Right, and similar to along those lines, you know, we want to also streamline the time that it takes for players to actually get going and set sailing in the game. Um, you know, I think uh, the Ramshackle Sloop is a great example, a ship that you can get from the free port that costs a lot less, you know, it takes a lot less time to acquire it. And so we are also looking for ways to uh, enable players to acquire ships and get out and sail much more quickly and much more regularly because we want them out in the ocean, right? Um, additionally, we also want the oceans to feel less repetitive. We want ocean gameplay to feel more inviting and more interesting. A lot of the feedback that we get from players sometimes is, you know, oh, there's not enough to do in the ocean. I, I feel bored mm -hmm. even, right? And so we want to try to address those specific pain points by giving players more things for them to do on the ocean to make it feel like, oh, yeah, I'm not just going to be standing there on a mast for X number of minutes as I'm sailing across the ocean. Um, and then lastly, you know, we also want to provide more incentives and better rewards for ocean-based gameplay. Um, you know, we, we do have things that are drawing players out mm -hmm. onto the ocean, but we want to improve upon that and make it even more appealing and, and more of a draw so that players are like, yeah, I can spend the majority of my time in the ocean because I like that, and also it just feels very rewarding in general. Right, and some of the specifics we can talk about during this phase is like gen generally more things to do out at sea. Maybe that's more NPC encounters or types of NPC. NPC encounters, maybe you're not just always running into the same kind of ships of the dam, for example. Right, yeah. Um, things obviously to do on your ship, whether that's games with crew, maybe we'll work on improving existing systems such as fishing. Mm -hmm. We want to hear what you guys have to say, so bring on your suggestions about what you would like to do on your boat because we're going to hear it out and maybe it's something we may end up doing in this phase. And then obviously, a really hot topic, especially for survival games, is offline protection. And in our case, offline ship protection. Like, right. We know how much it sucks to build a ship, commit all that time in there, and then maybe you're not part of a larger group, maybe it's just you and a couple of friends playing. Or you're you guys, gone for a couple exactly, days. Exactly, you right. log off for the evening, or you've taken the weekend, you come back, and then your boat's sunk. Yeah. We know that sucks. And there are things we're looking into to kind of rectify that problem. There's, there's kind of a few different ways we can mm -hmm. approach it. And once we've come to something that's more concrete, we're going to be happy to share that with you. Yeah. And finally, it's speed and, I guess, wind. Yes, we're right. Out and see, because uh, this is a complaint we hear a lot. Like, we know a lot of you enjoy sailing, but one of the frustrations is how long it takes for you to get from A to B. Because yes. when you have to do that every single day, and it's just, you know, it's, it's gets, it gets a bit tedious. So mm -hmm. that's something we want to address in the game. Like, how long is it going to take from A to B? Maybe we end up changing speed cells. Maybe we fix them. Like, there's kind of a few things we look at. Cargo containers, too. So. Right. There's a lot of areas where we exactly. can increase and improve speed and wind in general right. to make that feel like a much faster, more streamlined experience. Yeah. Uh, one thing we do really want to touch on real quick um, before we jump to the next phase is ships. So we know that a popular request from players is more ships 
more ship types, more ship chassis and, and silhouettes and all that sort of thing. Um, so it is something that we feel very strongly about bringing eventually. Mm -hmm. We do want to add more ships and more ship types to the game eventually. However, we are probably not going to do it right away just because we want to make sure that the ships and sailing and ocean-based gameplay component, the, that area of the game, feels really strong and polished and in a place where we feel very confident where we can then go and add additional ships and ship right. types. Doing that first before we really get all of that feeling good is only going to complicate our ability to actually balance those areas of the game. And mm -hmm. so, unfortunately, we are probably going to table new ship types just for a bit but we do really, really believe in bringing them eventually. Right. I want to see more ship types. Like, so. Let's focus on making the ocean feel good and ships feel good, and then we can bring in more ships. Plus, the other caveat to that is like the cost of what goes into making a ship. There's mm -hmm. a lot of, like, every single individual plank needs to be designed. We have to consider the physics when they're out in the ocean. Right. Different wave types. Like when they, and then when you add structures onto that, there's a lot of technical work that goes into ships. They have a large memory footprint as well. These are all things like... It's a working. lot more work than it seems, exactly. right? Yeah. But the good thing is we're working on improving these systems, especially with the work we've done on other platforms. So with our console work that's taking place, mm -hmm. the, the work we did of single-player, non-dedicated mode, all these kind of combine into improving the core systems we have in the game. So like there will be a time when you will get your new ships. Right. And it will be a lot easier for us as a team to manage to implement as yeah. well. Yeah, just bear with us. We'll right. get there for sure, yes. Yeah. All right, let's jump into phase three. So phase three is talking about skills in combat. Mm -hmm. And something I want to clarify before we talk about the specific points is we're not going to share as much details about the later phases, phase three and four right now. The main reason for that is, um, you know, they're just they're later down the road right. and things could always be changing and, and, and adjusting internally. And so we don't necessarily want to talk about a bit of the, the examples of what mm -hmm. we might be bringing for this specific phase and the next one. So we're going to stick a little high level here, but we wanted to give you kind of an overview picture of what you could expect when we do get to this phase when it comes to the new roadmap. Um, so to start with, we have the skill tree rework. And so what we want to do there is actually rework the skill tree to give players more depth and more uh, feeling of meaning as they're making choices in their skill tree, right? This could be from a number of ways that we're exploring, such as uh, specializations or roles, things that are a little more associated with mm -hmm. sort of depth of skill trees. So that is something that we're looking on doing as well. Yeah, when it comes to combat, uh, we definitely want to create more fluid and impactful combat. The animations we have in there now are just kind of first pass to get the combat system implemented. We know they're a little slow sometimes, mm -hmm. not as impactful. Uh, the damage is a little bit spongy in fights. Or in, and, you know, I think there's a lot of balancing that can happen in terms of, like, hit points and what weapons do what type of damage where and all that stuff. And, you know, some of this work has actually already happened on the content side. We just haven't had time to implement it yet. Um, so when we get to a phase three, it'll be pretty exciting to get some of that more polished feel into the combat. Mm -hmm. Right. And something else that's super important came up a few times in the question, in the Q&A thread, and I mean, let's say we hear this every single day, sure. is ship combat and mm -hmm. incentivizing ship fights. Like, we hear the, the boarding meta and piracy, like, we want that to be a thing. We want players to fill out. You can go out and see and actually be a pirate. Oh, yeah. Whether that means just boarding someone and taking their loot, whether that means stealing their ship, like we're going to address claim time. Sure, right. Like that. It's, it's a little and too long. We're yeah. going to look at some of the things that kind of discourage it right now, such as, you know, harpooning someone and they're just blowing their ship to smithereens <laughs> or the NPC aimbot swivels, which sure. are just like have the best aim in the game and you can't really compete. So mm -hmm. these are things we want to address. Like we know that they are points that you guys have brought up to us and we recognize them and we do plan to get to them. Sure, yeah, and there's one more thing too. Um, you know, I want to just talk about PvP specifically, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's something that is very important to me. I have a background in skills and balance and PvP development, especially on MMO work, right? And so we are looking at um, adjusting things so that we move more towards a skill-based game as opposed to gear-based, right? right? Right now, there's some disparity between blueprints yes. and scaling, <laughs> and so right. we're going to be looking at that, and we're going to be looking to rectify some of the problems there to make things a bit more of an equal playing field for players so that PvP doesn't quite feel so lopsided sometimes. Right, right. So, Looking yeah. forward to it. And then finally, phase four. So, wait, I should hang about finally. There are going to be more phases Oh, after yes, this, yeah. But these are the this phases. This is the that, end of Alice. Exactly. No, right, yeah, right. These are the phases we're just revealing right, to yeah. you today. So, <laughs> first of all, is we're going to be exploring alternative world layouts and network options. So, mm -hmm. something that comes up a lot is a combined PvP and PvE network where we just have one giant grid and you have servers that encourage PvP and servers that, you know, where you can't do it at all. Maybe there's a middle ground too. So these are things we are considering and it's very, a lot of your threads are super useful because some of you guys go into incredible detail. Like I've read threads like 4,000, 5,000 words long about oh, yeah. like why this is the most effective way mm -hmm. to build the word and we're taking it all under consideration. We're going to be running our own tests and, you know, we do have the PTR network so maybe things will go up in there. Something else we're considering is the, the biome layout. Like right now we've had it set so it's, you know, symmetrical and we have polar at the top and it's bottom. It's pretty but, real world earthy, right, exactly, yeah. But 
we can we can shift that. They're all puzzle pieces, right? We can move that all around and totally. find the most optimal way to play the game. Yeah, and you know, similarly along those lines, we're also looking at um, things like NPC <coughs> ports and, and mm -hmm. the, the, the free ports and things like that. Right. Um, you know, a lot of people ask for things like auction houses and storage. And, yes. You know, we we aren't exactly sure what elements we might want to add with respect to that, but mm -hmm. we are keenly aware of wanting to flesh out the world to make it feel um, more more lively. You know, to mm -hmm. make it feel. Um, more reflective of the scale in which our game actually takes place. Right. Um, something else that we're looking at is actually exploring adding factions to the game. There's a lot of different ways that we could actually introduce something along these lines. You know, are they NPC factions that you just gain rep with? Are they factions that you actually join as a player? Um, is there a territory control type of meta to the game with factions, right? So this is something that we hear from a lot of players. We, we recognize that it's something that a lot of people want added to the game as an extra layer on top of our world. So it's, it's something that we're going to be experimenting and, and exploring down the road, I think. So. Cool, and I think something else we got to talk about is the claiming system. Mm -hmm. So when we launched, there was a lot of difficulties and problems with the claiming system. We made some changes in, a, in the Mega Update very early on, and then since then we've also made some adjustments here and there. We recognize there are still things we want to solve with it, like one of the big things, Pillar Spam. We hate sure, it. Sure, yeah. We know you guys hate it, but we know it's a necessity for you guys to actually do that. And that's, that's something how to play we, right Exactly now. Yes. right. And we want yeah. to tackle that. We don't want that to exist. We want to find a way to encourage both settling or owning islands, and maybe that's through rewards and stuff like that. There's kind of a lot of things we're going to explore. Like this the whole claim flag location thing. Like, sure. Does a fight for an island take place on the island itself, or do you fight? Around the ocean. The, the yeah. Exactly. Like so there's there's various things we're considering and this is gonna be a really big phase, right? Like so yes. there's a lot of options we have and we'll look into your feedback about it all as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and part of that phase too is gonna be taking another look at the tames and creatures. You know, in order for us to elevate the sea gameplay, uh, it's necessary to kind of uh, prioritize that stuff over the current implementation of how tames and creatures impact the game, me game meta. So we'll be scaling back kind of the importance of that stuff a little bit. They definitely still have a role in the game. Uh, you know, it's not that we're necessarily cutting anything right. uh, that's already there. Uh, we just want to make some balance changes uh, and, and make sure that the incentivization is there to go out and do sea stuff rather than stick on land and tank with your tames or hide behind a pen of like super powerful creatures just sure. because you don't want to <laughs> lose your stuff. You know, that, that all rolls into it. But I think the end result is uh, if we do all of that stuff correctly, the tames and the creatures are going to be deprioritized a little bit right. to where they are now. Mm -hmm. We also want to make some balance changes to PvE content that's already there, such as the mythical creature fights and found of youth quests and all the things that you can do right now in the game for PvE. Uh, we'll definitely be taking another look at uh, related to the tames and creatures and how you achieve them, but also just in their own right. Mm -hmm. Right, like we know it's important to you guys that you want this to feel like a ship game, and that's all important to us as well, and everyone in the studio. Like That's why we made Atlas, that's why we spend most of our development <laughs> sure. resources. And, and, then, and while that's true, what other game can you put your animals on a ship and ride them around and <laughs> right. jump onto another ship true, while true. you're riding horseback? So, <laughs> exactly. You know, right, there's right. Strength, We're always going to have yeah. tames and creatures. to the yeah. tames and creatures, and right, we want right. to make sure those complement the actual ship combat and not mm -hmm. like, oh, no more Creatures right, right. Yeah. Totally, yeah. So um, something that came up mm -hmm. in the question, a thre question and answer thread specifically that I don't feel we've covered in the stream is living world events. Like, are sure. we planning to do big events for Atlas? Like, what's your take on that? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, um, coming from the MMO space and, mm -hmm. um, you know, just being in general an admirer of those types of living world models and large world events across MMOs in general, it's something I would love to bring. You know, um, it is... Probably something that we would look at, um, you know, at the end, the tail end of this roadmap, I I either in this phase or afterward. But um, it's something I would love to bring because it really just does breathe life into mm -hmm. your world, and it's those are events that your communities rally around. Like everyone just gets really excited about that stuff. So, have some ideas. so you have some ideas. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm, I'm I, I hearing do that too. Eric's going to get his own private god creature and go into the world and create world events. Right, just yeah, devs, right. devs stomping around, yeah. messing players up. Yeah, you know, th there is an opportunity there. Our mm -hmm. world is large enough to support that and so right. we'll definitely be considering those down the road for sure um, but maybe you know we'll, we'll, we'll bring those details when when we get to that point yeah so um, okay yeah so that's again that's our roadmap right that's now cool stuff um, it's not everything as you mentioned right mm -hmm. it's not um, you know the full scope of development for right. Atlas, but this is kind of our plan of attack moving forward so. yeah and like we said this will all be happening post Xbox launch Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that. Right. You want to talk about Xbox? <laughs> Let's talk about Xbox. Uh, I think the last time we even really officially mentioned Xbox was when we announced 
Atlas in right. December of last year. Um, and we've kind of been quiet since then, but the truth is we've sort of always been working on it in the background, mm -hmm. sometimes less hard than other times, but we've been very focused on it uh, over the past many months. And uh, it's come a long way. It's really getting close to launching. Mm -hmm. uh, and just to show you how close, we actually want to show you a live demo uh, today of Xbox and Steam uh, with crossplay. So let's switch over to that. So as you can see here, we've got Xbox on the left. You can see the Xbox UI. You've got the Steam uh, overlay on the right. Um, and you know, there's not even today. There's still not a lot of games that you can play crossplay between Xbox and Steam on the same network. I mean, of course, it happens, but mm -hmm. it's not a definitely a rarity in a large open world like survival type pirate game, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And um, I think we're really excited about uh, Xbox and Steam players playing on the same network together. Um, and this is something that once Xbox launches is just going to be the norm. You know, it's right. not on our official servers anyway. There's not going to be you know, an option necessarily to join a separate world. These mm -hmm. players are all going to be playing together, uh, which I think is really important considering the scope of Atlas's world and how many servers there are and how many players it can support. Mm -hmm. We want as many players as possible playing together in the world regardless of platform. And you know, we're doing some things to kind of make that uh, have uh, parity in terms of like gameplay and difficulty and, and all that as well that we'll talk about here in a second. Um, but, you know, I'm really excited about this. You know, I'm typically a, a console player a lot of the times mm -hmm. because I've got family around and I can't <laughs> sit and face into a corner and ignore them and, you know, want to play together with, uh, uh, with the wife and the kid and stuff like that. And so I think that uh, by bringing these players together, you know, it's one thing that I've been, like, waiting for since the launch of Atlas. And it's always been our goal to have cross-play between all players on Atlas regardless of, of platform. And, you can see here it's, it's real and uh, it's coming pretty soon. Oh yeah, and I mean, we're also super excited about the notion that Xbox means a big influx of players for the game, right? Mm -hmm. Like, players are always asking for more options and they're always asking for options to play together uh, independent of their platform, right? And yep. so they want to play on the platforms they have and, and we, you know, it's something that I think Wildcard and Grapeshot have always been aspiring to, to, to bring to more platforms so that people can play together. And so we're really excited to be bringing that. Something else that we also are working on is uh, keyboard and mouse support for yeah. Xbox, right? We're currently aiming to have full keyboard and mouse support enabled on day one, or if not day one, very shortly after right. that, right? We wanna give players, again, those options to play the way they wanna play, and that's um, support that we're looking to bring for Xbox. Mm -hmm. And I think something really important to share is, especially with our, like our, we've been in game preview before, right? And Alice will be launching into game preview, and because of this, we will be able to maintain 100% parity with Xbox and PC. So right. PC's getting an update, Xbox is getting it too. And the, the bulk of that work has kind of been done in the initial setup. Like it's all going through the same kind of branch. And when we do the work, when our programmers are making their blueprints or you know their stuff in UE, it's, right. they're, they're making it, uh, keeping in mind both platforms. And now the, the lead time, I guess, is just cut tremendously. And mm -hmm. now we can actually ship those updates together at the same time. Right, simultaneously. Right, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I think we do, before we close, have just a few more player submitted questions that we wanted to tackle today. Um, so, Jet, um, let's see, will you ever go back to making captain's logs, which don't spoil content, but instead talk about the design direction of the game? Oh, I think that's more of a question for you, because you're the designer. <laughs> but, I mean, it, it, I'll think about it. Okay, I don't know. cool. Like, spoiling content is fun, you know? I I'm think spoiling. players, uh, yeah, it's right, fun. Right. It's fun to spoil, but I think surprises are fun, too. Right, so right. Maybe we'll we should see. think we'll about it. We'll see. It depends <laughs> how you do with your design. <laughs> oh, so here's one that came out. Jesse, as the art director, <laughs> do you have any plans to add more colors to the current palette? Yeah, you know, I mean, we've been talking about making some improvements to paint in general, um, you know, just to, the material-wise and making it a little bit more uh, realistic in the way it's applied. And I think uh, adding more colors to that is definitely within the realm of possibility. I mean, you can never have too many paint colors, right? And as long as it looks plausible <laughs> why not support it you know and maybe not maybe you want to paint stuff like shiny gold i don't know mm -hmm. you know <laughs> i think i'll vote just that was bit, we had some shiny gold going there. i actually like that but yes, it's, it's, i'm not an artist all right so you know it's a little gaudy <laughs> maybe but yeah right. no it was it was pretty good all right what else we got for questions so uh eric um as our new designer i think everybody would really appreciate mm -hmm. you just chiming in on if you have any plans to add uh, any cosmetic whiskers, cat ears, or a cat tail 
to the game. I mean, I mean, we do have the cat coming out, right? So I, I honestly don't know if we can find an artist that's be willing to work on that stuff. But you never know. You know, I, I'm not going to make any promises though. So. Um, oh yes. Okay. This is this is my favorite one. You ready? Um, Jat. When will Captain Jat Sparrow be returning? Uh, oh, whenever you want, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Well, He's back. He never <laughs> left. <laughs> he was never gone. In the I like to think place, Captain Jasper is. I like future, when you changed though, so. your is name. Here? Right. When, yeah. you, when you changed away from it, the whole studio was sad. Yeah, we're like, where's Jat Sparrow? <laughs> He's still here. He's still here. <laughs> Sounds like a return is in the works. We'll and, see. For sure. And the final question, I guess, mm -hmm. is: Are we going to be making this Q and A a regular thing? Maybe something we do monthly. You know, it's a lot of work, Jet. I don't really know. No, just, yeah, of course. Yeah, right. the, the, when we do do a stream, mm -hmm. we'll definitely do the live stream Q&A. Um, everybody's questions and, and feedback were super helpful for us, not only to, um, you know, put the stream together and answer the questions that are important to you, but um, I just, I really like hearing what's pressing for players. Right. And so in addition to that, we'll, we, we, we want to solicit that input from players just mm -hmm. more generally. So any thoughts and questions and feedback and concerns that you have, shoot them our way. But yes, the live Q and I, the live stream Q and A stuff, we'll definitely mm -hmm. repeat And that. I'm pretty excited about this because like, I think we've been, it's safe to say we've been holding back on some information for some time now. Mm -hmm. Like myself and Dolly, we haven't been as community as we are normally on the forums and stuff like that. And it's because a lot of this stuff has been kind of kept under wraps. We've been planning our phases out, but now that it's, like out there, yeah. we can finally start talking about the these things. The floodgates are open. To and then so you can speak, send me yeah. and Dolly all your questions, and then I'm gonna knock on Eric's door and be like, "Hey, let's go through these questions together." Right, and, and see what we can answer. Exactly. So you'll see myself, him, and Dolly present on the forums and responding to this stuff now. So it's pretty good times. Absolutely. Finally. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. All right, well, that's all for today, actually. Um, we'll be back again next month, actually, for another live stream, I think. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll share even more updates and I think even more details right. on the roadmap and what's coming up next, including some Xbox details as well. But until then, keep a weather eye on the horizon, and thank you so much for tuning in today. Wait, thanks, Don't everyone. to tell them about hat? Just... See you next time. See you next time. <laughs> Have a great... <laughs>